Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Beautiful, beautiful morning. New York City, man. I'm telling you, <clears throat> beautiful New York weather. Everything is fine, fantastic. The dogs are outside. People are outside. Actually, this morning, you know, coming in, I, I found out that so many people at the park. You know, people are already playing basketball. Eight, eight o'clock in the morning, people are playing basketball already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we have been, we've been hiding in the house. We've been hiding, but now we are out. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to just quickly just say happy new month. Happy, happy new month. This is the month of May. The month of May is here by the grace of God. I'm telling you, this is going to be the month of great things in your life. The month of settlement in your life. The month of enlargement in your life. The month of great things in your life okay so you are going to start expecting that great thing those great things to happen in your life the miracle of god uh that will happen in your life 
the Lord God Almighty will connect you to the right path, the right source, the right person, the right man, the right woman. The glory that the Lord God Almighty has planned concerning your life, this month will bring forth that glory in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, as you're pleasing God, that your enemies will become your footstool. I'm telling you, the Bible said, he said, you prepare a table before me, right in the presence of my enemy. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that your enemy will be seated right there and they will see that goodness and the prosperity that the Lord God Almighty will prepare for you in the month of May. This month of May, the Lord said, I will do brand new things. New things are going to begin to happen. Can't you see? Can't you feel it? I'm feeling it already. I'm feeling the great thing that God is about to do. The book of Isaiah, the Bible says, I will bring them out of their graves and I will establish them in the land. The Lord is bringing you out. It doesn't matter how long your business has been dead. It doesn't matter how long your marriage has been dead. It doesn't matter how long that health issue has been there. In the month of May, the Lord God Almighty has promised that he will bring you out of that grave. And will establish you in your land. It means that a dead tree can still come back to life. You are coming forth. You are coming out of that prison. You are coming out of that jail. Huh? In the name of Jesus. The Bible now says, it says you will be like a tree. Planted by the water side. It means that your root will touch water. Abundant supply of water. He said you will bring forth fruit in your season. He said that your leaves shall not wither. I prophesy to your life this day that I connect you to that tree. You will become that tree. You will bring forth fruit in season and your leaves shall not wither. And everything you do, you will prosper in it. In the name of Jesus. This month of May will bring your testimony. This month of May, you'll connect to a mega testimony. This month of May, you will not die, but you will live. You will not bury any of your family members. You will not bury your children. They will not bury you this month in the name of Jesus. But this month will be the month of your greatness in Jesus' name. You see, this month is not going to be a kind of a month of maybe or maybe not. <laughs> this month is a month of assurance that the Lord God Almighty has set to bless you, set to enlarge your coast, coast and he has promised that he will do great things in your life. The Bible says, I know the thought I have towards you is the thought of good, not of evil, to take you to your expected hand. God is taking somebody there in Jesus' name. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the month of May. Beautiful, powerful month of May. Uh, and this month, I'm telling you, just get ready. You're about to dance. You're about to dance this month. Mudukwe Ola John, you're about to dance. You will dance and dance and dance until your dancing shoe we want out. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Somebody's about to dance this month. If you're that person that's about to dance, just tap it in, say, I'll receive it. Say, I receive, I receive, I receive, I receive it. Okay, somebody, this prophecy is coming for somebody. You're about to dance this man. You will dance over your enemy. You will dance over that situation. You will dance over, oh my God, victory upon victory is coming for somebody. You're about to begin to dance. I'm telling you, go and get your dance shoe ready because you're about to enter into the mood of dancing, the mood of thanksgiving. Okay, God is about to do wonders and you are going to give thanks and glory unto the name of the Lord. You will dance throughout this year. From this month all the way to December, it's going to be dancing, 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 glorifying God in your life, in the name of Jesus. It's just ones that are asking for papers to work in America. The Lord will find a way for you. The mind of God will come to pass upon your life in the name of jesus those ones that are asking for jobs you are asking for the fruit of the the ones that are asking for healing in their body i command you to receive right now in the name of jesus let the mind of god be fulfilled even in your life in jesus name you will not die young but you will live to fulfill the goodness of god in the land of this living in jesus name glory to god hallelujah hallelujah welcome 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 now, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me. Now, relationship, like I always say, is a crazy thing. <laughs> I, I, I listen, you, you won't believe it. No matter how prosperous you may be, 
It doesn't matter how rich you may be, what kind of money you are making, the kind of house you live, the kind of car you drive, you have a jet, you have a Lincoln Navigator 2019, or you are driving a Range Rover 2019. Listen to me, relationship matter will affect your life if you are in a wrong relationship. You will not still have peace. I've been born like Rikitola. God bless you. Good morning. You will still not have peace. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of job you have. It doesn't matter how much you've been paid. It doesn't matter what kind of house you're living in. It doesn't matter how many family members you have. It doesn't matter how beautiful your children may look. It doesn't matter how fine and handsome you may be. The moment there is a relationship issue, you will not find it easy. You won't find it easy. <laughs> Good morning, I did look at it. How are you a long time ago in Bethlehem? I'm telling you, you won't find it easy. Normally, you see, you will find out that when you see women come to church and then they say, Pastor, I want to see you. Can you please wait? I want to see as a man of God, I always have it at the back of my mind that there must be a relationship with Allah. The man has started again and the woman is running from one pole to pillar trying to find solution to this issue. Kai, I don't know what I'm saying. Trying to find solution. Good morning, Mojisola Aduni Kolako. God bless you, madam, all the way from Nigeria. God bless you, Lucia Romire. How are you? Okay, you learned something yesterday. You learned about Iya Allah Anu Baba Allah Anu. I want Bangi Robinson here. I want your Bangali. One Bangali. I want your Kakri. One of my boys was left. One 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 one. Allah Anu Olori Buru. Where? Allah Anu Osi. Allah Anu Toma Alosono Akbad. Now, what am I saying this morning, ladies and gentlemen? Is that when relationship issue is eating you like cancer, you may not be able to settle down. Things may not be able to flow the same the way it should flow. Because your heart is not at rest, your heart is not at peace. There is no joy coming in from the inside outside. Alright? Coming in from the inside outside. There is nothing. Alright? Also, so that's the issue. Marriage can ruin a lot of things. Relationship can mess up a lot of things, all right? So, in your life, so much can be messed up. So, that is why when there is a relationship issue, you will find out that people will always have different kind of problems because you will not know how the small, small one will be coming because the big one is affecting your life. It will not start attacking attracting other ones. That's when your BP will start going up. That's when you will find out that your job is not stable anymore. That's when you start making mistakes. That's when you start making one thing or the other. Church won't make no sense to you. Inside of that situation, you'll be asking questions. Is God real? I have gone to that level before in my life that I, I actually question God. Are you really alive? Are you real or you are just fake? Are we just talking about a God that do not exist? In that situation, you will begin to ask questions. I'm telling you. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. It is because your marriage is working. Oh, some of you because your marriage is working. Some of you because you still have that man in your house. Some of you because you have that woman in your house. You may not be able to ask questions now. Okay, go and ask people. People that are in deep, deep stuff. They are in situation, in relationship. They do wake up in the middle of the night to ask God, Are you real? Come on, man. You see, are you really real? Listen, listen, they, they, so many of them, they have, so many of them, they have actually disconnected from God that God doesn't make no sense to them. God doesn't just make no sense to them at all. That you've been preaching Jesus can do it, God can do it, this can do it, that can do it, but they don't just see any reason to actually continue to have faith because it's not just being done. Do you understand people that have been very nice, they don't commit atrocity, they don't go jump from one bed to another bed, and they don't they don't steal money, they have good job, they are nurses, they are, you know, they, they are pharmacists, they are doctors, they are whatever, but they are the ones that are in hell. They are in hell. So they continue to ask themselves, Pastor Shola, I have been good. 
Pastor Shola, I've done everything possible. I don't reduce, man. I'm very hardworking. I am a supportive kind of person. I want to support a man, but every man that I've been seeing in my life, they're the dubious ones, they're crazy ones, that just want to use me around. And they now come to the conclusion that God is not, God is not real. They say, God doesn't exist. He says, they say, tell me, tell me, Pastor Shola, can you prove it to me? Tell me something. And so many times I get confused myself that I actually want to say something about it, but I just don't know what to say. Okay? It, it's just so difficult to actually be able to encourage or be able to massage the heart of somebody passing through situation. Somebody passing through situation. He, he, I, can't, I don't know what to say. All right. All of these stupid pastors, they have messed up a lot of things. They come and give us testimonies of what never happened. Oh, I went, I prayed for one person. He's been looking for a job for past 21 years. And then I prayed for the person and they invite him to come to Central Bank and they made him the manager of Central Bank. Every one of us, we will shout hallelujah, but we will now start looking. But you prayed for me too. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Do you see what I'm saying? That I just sit down there sometimes, I get confused. Don't know what to tell them. Okay? But, but one thing I come to understand in my life is that every one of us, we are living a life that is scripted. God already wrote the script. The script is there for us to just follow. Our life is just, we are just following the script. Alright? It is the will of God that is being done in our life. Any situation that comes your way, whatever it is that you fall into, however it is that your life is going, all, the, all you need to do is just continue to thank God. Be in Christ. Don't fornicate. Don't womanize, don't lie, don't scam people, be the best you can be and just continue to follow it because one day, God is actually taking you to a point in your life that you will open your eyes and you will say, Kai, so this is the journey, this is how the journey is going to end, so this is exactly where you are taking me to God but listen to me ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot of endurance to be able to believe God, faith is endurance, it's not just I have faith Oh, I have it. It's going to happen now. It will happen tomorrow. No, it's not going to happen like that. You have faith. You have to endure it. You have to wait for God's time. It, it might take time. It might take time. Your life is not being ruined by God. God can ruin nobody's life. Your life is not going to be messed up by God. God cannot mess anybody's life up. What God is doing, he said, I know the thought I have towards you is the thought of good, not of evil, to take you to an expected end. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, there is a place in glory. There's a place in righteousness. There's a place in multiplication now there's a place in glory that god wants to take you to but you gotta endure you need to step down and say god you are everything i'm nothing i'm only following instructions here you begin to follow god and god will take you through the journey all what god is asking for from you is for you to step on the accelerator leave the steering alone let god be the one to steer he knows the way. He knows the journey. All he needs you to do is to commit to his hand and believe in him. Step on the accelerator. Let the car start rolling. Don't struggle with the steering. Close your eyes and say, I got no eyes. God is my eyes. I got no hands. God is my hand. I only have my leg to step on the accelerator and then keep on moving. I'm telling you, one day you will get to that destination, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. You see, when you are looking to your side and looking to your right, your left, everywhere, and looking at the prosperity or the movement or the achievement or the testimonies of others, you begin to kill yourself. You begin to kill yourself. You begin to knock yourself down. And at the end of the day, you begin to run a race. And run a race in competition with the ones that you are looking at. And that's not the mind of God for you because you are a peculiar person, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Your life is different. You are unique in your creation. You are not like every other person. You are different. That's why they call you Sola, the lion. You are different. You are not the same like everybody. The distance you are going, you don't know how far you are going. You, The place God wanted to place you, you don't know how glorious the place may be. But listen to me, the journey may be rough. 
The journey may be so sad. The journey may not be palatable. The journey may not look like the kind of journey you dream about. The journey may not feel the way you want it to feel. But listen to me. You are not the one running that race. You are not the one moving. God is taking you to a point in your life that when you will wake up <laughs> that same morning, when joy will come in the morning, the Bible says, sorrow may tarry all night. That it is it's possible for sorrow to tarry all night, but in the morning, the joy will come. You will work, you will wake up from your sleep in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you will not believe it. What you going to see, what you going to see, the way you going to feel, the prosperity around you, the greatness around you, you will find out that God is going to give you a multiple fold what you've been dreaming of. Greater glory will come. And you won't understand it it's because you have been good, because you have been and you have been you have been you have been consistent, you have been dealt, and you are actually connected to God in faith. You begin to see God in action. <laughs> you don't understand it. So many people ask me questions. They say, Pastor Shola, I say yes. So many of the of the of the Facebook pastors are very rich. I say yes, they are rich. Oh, the people are giving them money. I say, oh, good, good for them. I say, good for them. Ah, some of them are just bought houses. They just bought cars. They are buying big, big things. They are spending money. They are doing this. Why, Pastor Shola? You are not selling what the people want to buy. What you are selling is not something they want to buy. People want to buy revelation. They want to buy prophecy. People want you to lie to them. That's what will bring money. I said to people, I said, listen, where God is taking me is different from where he's taking them. I know the thought I have towards you, said the Lord, is the thought of good, not of evil, to take you to an expected end. There is an expected end where God wants to take each and every one of us to. If I remove myself from my lane, I will not become anything in life. If I should go on another person's journey, I will fail in my own journey. I have to stay on my lane. I keep on watching and keep on fasting my face upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I do not know how far he's taking me. I got no understanding the journey. But one thing I found out is that he's putting his words in my mouth. He's the one controlling and directing me. I don't have that urge or appetite for lying. I don't have the appetite for scamming people. I don't have the appetite for sharing fake revelation. I don't have the appetite of faking miracles. But one thing I have the appetite for is for me to speak the undiluted word of God. Is for me to speak the truth. Either they like it or they don't like it. Either they are buying it or they are not buying it. One thing I know is this, that one Day, I will wake up at my at my destination. One day I know that I will wake up at my destination and everything will be possible. All around about me will become prosperous. All around about me I will smell money. All around about me I will smell greatness. I am telling you the day is coming. That's what the Bible says. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow to it. The prosperity of man will not take you nowhere. The prosperity of man will not take you anywhere. It will ridicule you. It will mess you up. That's what the prosperity of man will do for you. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. That's not where I'm going this morning. What I want to talk about is that marriage is complicated. You don't want to take it lightly. You want to know the word of God. You want to connect to the word of God. You want to believe in the word of God. You want to be patient with God. You want to listen to instruction daily and that is what will affect your marriage that's what will spin your life around you don't understand it now so many people have been coming to me they've been telling me so many things about their homes and i come to see one fact and the fact i come to see is that people are no longer lover of god they are not the fan of jesus they don't understand them. They don't follow instruction. I always tell you this all the time. You don't want to be a Christian if you cannot follow Christ. You don't want to be a Christian if you cannot follow Christ. Mona Lisa, God bless you. you if you can't, you can't follow Christ. Don't follow him. 
the moment you follow him, you are going to be under the authority of Christ and the rules and regulation will affect you. The only way you can escape is by you living in the world. Stay outside of Christ. Enjoy your life. Do whatever it is that you need to do. You will be fine. But the moment you have given your life to him, you have to live by the rules. Oh, you don't know. You don't know. You have to live by the rules. You can't be one leg in, one leg out. He will spit you out of his mouth. You can't live in Christ and live in the devil. It's not possible. You will take one master and reject the other one. Now, relationship is complicated. You need to understand the rules. You can't just be just bypassing the rules and living your life recklessly and making your own rules and doing whatever it is that you like. The Bible says, husband, love your wife. Kai. It's a great commandment. That's a great, a great rule. It's a great, it's a great commandment that you can never ever in this world bypass if you are a Christian. The moment you are a Christian, you are born again, you are you, it is compulsory. This is not, may I or may I not? Should I or should I not? Is this possible or not possible? You have to abide by the rules. You have to abide by the rules. Husband, love your wife. Okay? And he said to the woman, he said, submit to your own, to your, to your husband. Husband, love women, submit. You submit in love. You love in love. Oh, you don't understand. To love somebody, you must love God. You must know God. Because God is love and love is God. To submit unto somebody, you must know Jesus. Because Jesus Christ submitted himself unto the death on the cross. He is the master that can help you to submit. That is the one who understood what submission is all about. That is the one who can encourage you and teach you how to submit. That is the man that can teach you to love. Because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave. God will teach you how to love to give. Oh, man. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm saying this morning, but I'm saying it. I don't know what I'm saying this morning, but I'm saying it anyway. Praise God. Now, you need to know God. You have to know him. You have to abide by the rules. You cannot mess the rule up. It's never going to work for you. So by the time you say, husband, love your wife, it means that you carry her along. It means that you respect her. It means that you provide for her. It means that she is you and you are her. You think about her goodness. You think about her prosperity. You think about her health. You think about her, you know, money and everything. All right, and you love everything around her. You love her mother, you love her father, you love her sisters and brothers, you love the business is doing, you encourage her to do more, you push her to get more things done, you invest into her life, you build her up. That's what love is all around about. Love is not about having sex. Hello, hello, sir. Love is not about having sex. I was asking you. I said, sir, do you love your wife? He said, yes, sir. I have sex with her every day. I said, you are stupid. Are you crazy? Do you have any brain in your head at all? I, 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 it seems like it's sort of water in your head. Is that the example you're supposed to give me? I said, do you love your wife? He said, yes, sir. I, I love her. I always, I always have sex with her every time. I said, are you willing to are you crazy? Do you have sort of water in your head? And you can't you listen to yourself? Do you want me to record you and play it back to you? Okay, can I play it back to you? Do you want to listen to yourself? Are you normal at all? Did you pass through school? Are you having brain? I said, do you love your wife? You're telling me you have sex with her. Can't you have sex with a prostitute? Do you have to love somebody to have sex with them? No, you don't. You don't have to love somebody to have sexual relationship with them. But when we talk about love, love means that you reference the person, you provide for the need of the person, you are thinking about the good of the person, you are encouraging the person to be able to get more things done, you are investing into the life of the person financially, in every angle, spiritually you are praying for that person, it means you love the person. And you don't come here threatening her with divorce. If you love somebody, you don't be threatening the person with divorce. That is not somebody you love. 
I look at the woman. Do you submit to your husband? He said, yes, sir. I submit. I, I, I reference him, sir. I obey his rules and regulations. I do what he wants me to do. I do, I do, I do. Then I look at people so many times that they don't really understand what marriage is. And I don't blame them. I blame the churches where they grew up. Because they refuse to teach them the right thing about relationship. They refuse to teach them the relationship between them and God. If you don't have a relationship between yourself and God, how can you have relationship in marriage? You can't. Because you don't know God. You don't understand him at all. It is better for you not to be a believer and just stay outside. Because the rule outside is different. You can do as you like outside. You can beat up your wife outside. You can do whatever you like outside. But when you are inside of Christ, it's a different rule entirely. It's a different law, a different rule entirely. You have to follow the rules and regulation to love your wife and then to submit to your husband. And I started looking at this whole stuff. I see the way it's going. It's messing up a lot of Christian homes. No foundation at all. We don't teach foundation. People's heart is not is not is not okay. Their heart is desperately wicked. That they brought that wickedness into Christianity, and they are still wicked today. I was reading an article like two days ago. A brother, a young brother, sent the article to me of a lot of Nigerians that have killed their wives and they are in jail. And those people, they are Christians. It's the same on Christianity. That we allow people to kill people in Christianity. We are not teaching them nothing. All we're doing is just praying. Praying, praying, praying. Praying and killing enemies. We are supposed to kill ourselves. The prayer you're supposed to pray is not the killing of the enemy. You kill yourself. Be dead to self. Be alive in the spirit. Kill self and be alive in the spirit. Whenever you want to pray, you're supposed to kill your flesh and say, I kill myself. I render myself cute. I'm alive in the spirit. I'm alive in the Holy Ghost. You have to die to self to be able to wake up and become a man of the spirit. People are not dead to self. They are alive in the flesh. And they are doing the things of the flesh. No wonder they are not men and women of the spirit. No wonder they're doing wicked things. No wonder their heart is still wicked. No wonder they cannot know the things of God. No wonder they don't have compassion on people. No wonder they don't have love on pe to, to people. No wonder they kill for money. No wonder they render people useless because of money. No wonder they don't care who, who dies and who doesn't. No wonder that the heart of men is desperately wicked. That the wife can use the husband for money ritual. That the husband can use the wife for money ritual. They can come back together and unite to use their children to make money. That's the kind of wickedness we have in Christianity today. And then they bring that kind of a bastard money into the house of God to oppress other people. They bring that kind of stupid money and the pastors will be praying for them. I cannot believe it that people call themselves prophets. And when they see bad people in their churches, they cannot identify them. What kind of a stupid, blind, a blind, a blind prophet are you? What kind of a blind prophet is that? That could not see bad people. You see the, you see the witch and we, witches and wizards that is affecting people. You run around and be telling people stupid revelations of, of, of one witch from their mother's side affecting them. Or one wizard from their mommy's side affecting their life. But you see terrible people in your church who are pastors and they come on your altar and you celebrate them. You could not identify them as bad people. You couldn't. That's a terrible kind of lie. For men of God, men of God, to, to be lying on the altar and you cannot discern is a terrible thing. And we just pray stupid prayers everywhere. Die, die, die. Killing enemies that can never die. You want to kill the plan and the purpose of God. It's not possible. Because the enemy, the devil, the powers and principality, they are agents of God. He created them for his purpose. You can't kill the purpose of God. Go and read the Bible very well. You cannot kill the purpose of God. You need to kill yourself and be dead to self. Be alive in the spirit and you do the things of the spirit. Those that walk in the spirit, they are the sons of God. You want to be a son of God, you have to walk in the spirit. If you want to be a child of God, you have to walk in the spirit. You have to kill flesh and be alive in the spirit so that you can kill, you can be able to become the child of God. 
But no, we don't teach them that. We teach, we teach them rugged things. So in relationship, things are different. Relationship is very complicated. You have to be right. You have to be in your right state of mind to be able to enter into marriage. You have to be ready to learn new things to enter into marriage. You have to be ready to listen to the mind of God to enter into marriage. You have to be ready to take instructions from heaven to be married. You have to love God just like you love you, you love yourself and even much more than that. If you want to be married, if you want to be married, you have to be able to love your neighbors as yourself. If you want to be married, if you want to be married, you have to be ready to love your wife just like yourself. If you want to be married, you have to be ready to submit unto your own husband. I'm telling you. So when people are in relationship, many of them, they believe that they are the one controlling. You are not the one ruling. You are not the one ruling. You are not the one ruling. <laughs> if you are in relationship, you are not the one ruling that relationship. If you are in marriage as a Christian, you are not the one in charge. And that is the point I want to bring out today. People do believe that they are in charge. I married you. You are my wife. I am married you. You are my husband. And so what? You are not the one in charge, but God. Any marriage that is founded upon Jesus, you are not the one in charge. You got no power to be in charge. You are not the director of that home. You are not the head of that home. Jesus is the head of that home. He only put you as a man, as the representative of himself in that home. What is expecting of you is to first of all inquire of him. Anything you want to do, you must ask God first. What should I do in this situation? That's your boss. That's the CEO of the marriage. He created it. He put you in that home to represent him. You are the ambassador of Christ in that home. You don't have any authority of your own, but the authority of Christ. You need to actually connect with him daily to ask of him what do you have me to do today? How do you want me to address this situation? My wife has committed a crime. My husband has committed a crime. How do I cope with it? How do I deal with it? You don't just take the loss in your hand. You go to God. Unless God is not involved in your marriage. Unless God is not involved in your marriage. If God is not involved in your marriage, you can take the laws into your hand and beat up your wife and kick her out of the house and do whatever it is that you like and then ridicule your husband and kick him out of the house if God is not involved. So many of you, you believe, oh yeah, because I got married in the church, what God has joined together, let no man put a son down. I'm here to let you know. The announcement kind of listen to it. You can get married inside the pulpit if you like. You you can get married inside of the altar. You can dig the ground in the church building and get married inside the ground. If God is not there, God is not there. And I'm telling you, so many of the homes that we have today, they are being joined together because of the pastor of the church. They are joined together because of a family. They are joined together because of a business. They are joined together because of money. They are joined together because of, selfish, of a selfish reason. And you guys are fooling yourself thinking God is evolved. God is not evolved. He's not, he was not there. The day you are getting married, you remember when Christ was on the cross. The Bible says he turned away his face. That was exactly what he did on that wedding day. On the wedding day, the man is still a smoker. He's, 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 he's still drinking like, like fish. He's still womanizing. And you brought him to try to come and marry your own daughter in church. And you say, we're going to enjoy together. Let no man put us on that. Which God? Which God are you talking about? He looked away. It is the two of you that are getting married with your stupid pastor. With your stupid pastors. Okay? You guys are getting married. Alright? Together. Your pastor is the one there. Not God. Alright? The man is abusive. The man is, is abusive. He's a cheat. All right, and you brought him to church. You cover up the whole thing. And you allow that one to marry your own daughter. The, the girl is a prostitute. Walking all around the place naked everywhere. And you allow that one to marry your own son. 
And you're saying what God has joined together. They don't know no scriptures. They don't know anything about God. They don't go to, they only go to church on Christmas Day, on New Year Day, crossover New Year Day. That's the only time they go to church. They don't reference God. They don't pay no tithe. They don't develop. They know nothing about God. There is nothing around about them that is saying anything God. But you brought them to church. To marry them. And then you say, what God has joined together. Let no man put us on that. God was not involved. Don't put God into it. God was not there. God wasn't there. You are the one with your stupid pastor. While the one standing there. And you are all covering the truth. Covering up the truth. And you refuse to speak the truth. You refuse to speak the truth. When people are getting married in the church. And they are not members of the church. They paid the pastor to come and rent the church to get married. The pastor don't even know them. There wasn't any kind of moment of counseling. You, did you ask them question, what do you do? Are you born again? Tell me what you know in the Bible. What kind of life are you living? Do you know Jesus? What do you do? What kind of, do you cancel them? You didn't cancel them. They paid the pastor some money to come and get married in the church. And they opened up the church. They asked the choir to come and sing. The choir is only singing and entertaining them, not singing to God. Oh, God was not there. God was not there. He was not there. Forget about it. Anything that involves God can never be destroyed. Anything that the hand of God is, when God's hand is evolving something, can never be messed up. Never. You yourself in your heart, you'll be knowing this, that God was not evolved. God was not in your foundation. The relationship was, the, 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 the reason why you got together with that man is for your own selfish interest. The reason why you are in the relationship, you know, you knew it that the brother wasn't born again. You knew it that the sister wasn't born again. She's only fine as hell. Or oh, he's only a good man that has good job. He is not born again. You knew it that the man is, the man still smoke and drink. You know it that the man is still abusive and slapping your face. The man is actually fornicating 24-7. He cheated on you 15 times during friendship time. Cheated on you 500 times during the time of courtship. And because you just want to be married, you cover it up. And you brought him to the church to be married in front of God. God was in there. God, he turned away his face. He turned his face away. You are the one covering it. You want to be married by fire by force. Now you got it. Now you are crying. Now you are actually... I don't understand you. I don't understand you. That's exactly what we do in this world today. It's so terrible that we come over to blame everything on God. We blame God on everything, every mistake we have made in our life. We blame God. When the preachers are talking, you don't follow the instruction. The rules and regulation of the Bible, you don't follow it. God said, love God. That's the very first thing you should do. For you to be able to love other people, you must know how to love God. The moment you love God, the love of God will consume you. It will dwell on the inside of you and will make you to be an embodiment of love. That you can love and be loved at the same time. You will have the ability to love other people and other people will be able to love you. But because you are just so selfish to yourself, you want to eat your cake and still have it. You want to dance here in Igboro. You want to you want to want you want to jollificate in Igboro, and you still want to be a child of God. You don't worship two masters. You rather disconnect from one and marry the other. That's the way to do it. You want to enjoy the best of God. You serve God to your, to the best of your ability. You want to enjoy the fruitness of faithfulness of God. You'll be faithful to God. You want to enjoy the best of the Lord. You have to stick to him and believe in him. Trust in him. Have faith in him. That's how to make it happen. It's not one leg in, one leg out. So many people are in situation today, but they don't know. Because people are not ready to tell anybody. Because when you are paying your tithe to me, I just want to collect your tithe. I don't want to tell you the truth that will make you to run away. But I don't care about whatever it is that you do. All right? You pay tithe, you don't pay tithe. But I'm telling you the best of the best thing that you need to do in life is for you to give your life to Jesus. For real. Not for fake. Not halfway. Don't be singing, I surrender. Or, when you know that you don't mean it. Don't be singing no nonsense kind of songs. Where you know you are not going to give your life to Jesus. Go and sleep and think about your life two times. Do you really want to enjoy marriage? Do you really want to enjoy your relationship? Are you really ready for God to lead you through the journey? Or you just want to play pranks? If you are the kind of person that wants to play pranks, you are not supposed to be here. You are not supposed to be in the, in the house of God. Stay away from God. 
and enjoy your life outside. I'm telling you, you will enjoy your life to the fullest. So stay away from God. Because you are not supposed to obey God. If you want to obey God, you come to him. If you don't want to obey him, you don't come to him. You stay away from him. The moment you become born again, you are going to live according to the instructions of God. You can't live by your own instructions. It's never done. So, so many women in the relationship, they come out without understanding. So many men, they come out without understanding. Without understanding. All right? Now, many people, when they finish getting married, they now enter into a relationship with the mindset that their mother, who has been controlling their life, will still continue to control their lives. We still continue to control their lives. That's not the right thing to do. The moment you get married, the Bible says, you see, the law of the Bible, the rule, okay, of the Bible, is that wife, submit to your husband. I am talking about a real man. I'm talking about a man who's, who's got the heart of God. I'm talking about a man who loves God. I'm talking about a man that is well behaved. I'm talking about a man with brain, no salt and water. The Bible is instructing the women that you born again, you Christians, you must make sure that you submit unto your man. Submit unto your man. That's exactly what is instructing. That's what is asking for. All right? That is the that is the lay down rule that women should follow. You don't bring your mother with you when you are married. Your mother is not the second wife or the first wife. Your mother is not assistant wife, all right? Your mother is not supposed to be the manager of wife or wife manager. The other, your mommy is not supposed to be the accountant of the wife. The mommy is not supposed to come. He's supposed to stay with her own husband. What exactly is your mommy doing in your house? Why is your mommy coming in to come and lay down rules? What is your mommy's concern? What, what, what kind of right does she have? To tell you how to treat your husband. What kind of right does your mommy have to come and influence you in your husband's house? At that point in time that you said, I do, you are supposed to be submitting to your husband alone. And the Bible didn't even stop there. The Bible says, submit unto him the way you do unto God. The way you do. The way you do unto God. That's exactly what it says. That is exactly what it says. Submit. Submit to your husband alone and nobody else. And nobody else. That's exactly what it is. So for people who are ready to do the will of God, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to obey and to submit Unto him. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. You can't do any other thing. You can stay outside of Christianity and do whatever it is that you, you like. You can stay outside and make your own rules. You can do whatever it is that you like outside. But when you come into the Christian fold, you have no right to live any kind of life. You have to obey the scripture and let the scripture be what you will follow. If you refuse to follow it, then the causes that have been placed on people that refuse to follow the word of God will follow you. That is it. So for women... Who are in relationship for women who are married and you are a Christian. You need your mommy to stay with her own husband. If your mommy has succeeded in sending her own husband away, okay, so be it. Let her go and stay and be enjoying a single life. All right? Let her go and enjoy a single life. She cannot come and, you see, the person you should be taking instruction from is not your mommy. Your mommy is a failure. She is a failure in that field. She succeeded in sending your daddy away. Are you not supposed to ask questions? Say, mommy, if you are very good in marriage, cancel it. Why didn't you cancel yourself when daddy and you were fighting? That is when you, is it, this, this is what you need to know. You don't allow your mommy to come and be directing you. When your mommy is a failure, even if your mommy is not a failure, he has a bigger assignment to stay with her own husband, not you. 
I did your baby who say, when you allow government to be mine now, I must do so woman. Leave her alone. Mommy, hey John, leave that daughter alone. Go and live your life. If you don't have a life, if your husband has run away, go and find another young bobo and be marrying the best. Ma lo wa banana di wa ha for work bejo. Leave your daughter alone. Don't come to your daughter's house and be intruding. They don't need you there. The woman is married to her husband. They love themselves. They are doing well. Which one be your own? Huh? Mama, which one be your own? If you know you don't have a life, go and marry Jesus. Carry Bible and be preached. Preach all over the place. There is message from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You can't finish it in 500 years. All right? Go and be sitting down, be planning messages. Leave that girl alone. Let her enjoy her marriage. Let her submit to her, under, to her husband. Let her submit to the one that is the representative of Jesus. Let her submit to her husband and the two of them team up to be able to make something out of their life for their children. Hello, mommy. Hello, mommy. Hello, mommy. Hello, mommy. Hello, mommy. Hey, see, mommy, accountant of the bride, managing director of the bride, hey, assistant of bride, hey, oh, PA of bride, kilo kan yimbe, oh my god, you need you, she doesn't need you, she only need her, her husband, and the husband is there for her, let her live her life, kilo kan yimbe. Understand? Hello, Marono. I was going to, I was going, I was going today and I saw a cemetery. I said, Kai, I said, this is the kind of cemetery that we actually make people to want to die. Oh. The cemetery is beautiful. Okay, Mama, you don't want to die, Abby. Don't worry. I will send the picture of the cemetery to you. You will be so glad to die. All right? If you are actually at that age of dying, you are 85, you are 90. Oh, Nisaku. Oh, Sanku. If you are 70, oh, Sanku. At the age of 70, oh, Sanko, to back 70, or the So, mommy, please, if the matter is that you are afraid to die and be buried in Sengo Cemetery, there are better cemetery here that are very good that you can actually quickly rush to heaven. Okay? They will, they will encode, they will, they will accept you on the other side. They are with you. I will go on one road, mommy. I won't go on on the road day, yo, mommy. Oh, yeah, mommy, baba. They are waiting. Pastor Benga, good man, is They are waiting for you. They are waiting. Mommy, the cemetery here in America is beautiful. I will send the picture to you. It will encourage you to sleep and not wake up again. They will go and bury you there. Okay, but the issue is this. Stop disturbing these people. Don't stop disturbing them. Leave them alone. Let them be able to get money together for your funeral. Okay, if they don't work, if they can't be able to save money, how will they give you a befitting body for now? They can't give you now. Okay? So leave them alone. And then I'm not going to blame mommy. I will blame you, you brainless wife. Brainless wife, brainless wife. I will blame you, okay? Because you are brainless. You're supposed to put your mommy where your mommy belongs. Say, mommy, mo wan li oko. Mommy, mo wan li oko. Hey, hello, hello, ma, hello, to do that to me. Daddy me one leo a lonely. Hello to you, daddy me. Daddy me need you. Okay, you tell your mommy, my daddy need you. Go there, go and play with my daddy's banana. My daddy's banana has not been taught in six years. Because you refuse to go back to Nigeria. You refuse to go back to Nigeria. My daddy is in Nigeria waiting for you. Nobody is cooking for my daddy. Go there. Oza, be able to tell your mommy. Tell your mommy this is not your place. You can come here, come and do holiday here. Yeah? You do holiday, you go. All right? You are not coming here to say, you can't control my life. If this is my own life. I am living my life for my children and my husband. Okay? My husband is good. He is not abusive. He's a supporter. He is, he's, a, he's a right man. All right? That kind of stuff. Don't come and influence me like you did for your own self and mess your own life up. All right? So many women are outside like that. They're just terrible people. I don't understand them. I don't understand them. All right? So many. Now, we blame the men, blame the men, blame the men, blame the men for everything. All right. Men are supposed to be blamed. All right. But there are some women that are brainless. They don't have any brain. You marry a good man. A good man that is providing. You marry a good man that is hardworking. You marry a good man that is a godly man. You marry a good man that is doing everything for you. But you want to ruin it. You can't ruin it, though. If you ruin it, God will be angry, oh. You don't want God to be angry. You have to go and change your mentality. 
tell your brother, your brother, your sister, your siblings that are coming in to influence you. If they don't have a family, let them go and connect to pastors. I will give them wives and husbands so that they can be busy. Your, your siblings are not busy. So they always come and put their brake light in your whole house. When you and your husband are supposed to be doing bass, 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 the house is full. There is no privacy. You can't do anything. Your mommy is sleeping. You are doing tiptoe, tiptoe everywhere. Okay? Your brother and sister, they sit down in the TV room. They watch TV until 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay? They'll be there. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be laughing. They'll be calling Nigeria, taking picture of a house that don't belong to them. Which one be your own? Let them go back home. Let them come and marry. Let them come to me. I will give them wives. I will give them husband if they are if they are good people. Okay? The soup will finish in two days. We cook the food. The husband that put the money down will come home. No food for him to eat. Okay? He, he's got no privacy in his own home. He's thinking of coming to watch football. You guys are watching Yoruba movie. He cannot send you out of the place to come and watch his own football. You guys are watching Yoruba movie already. And, 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 so the man retired into his bedroom and is watching his football on his phone. And then the next thing is that you are making him to feel like as if to say he's the one that is the devil. Oh, you are a party papa. You are not coming out to play with my sisters. You don't come out to come and talk with my brother. Which brother am I going to talk with? Which brother? Uh, they have already overstayed their work. Okay, they only said they are going to spend two weeks. And this is four months already. When are they leaving? When are they leaving? Eh? Hey, Joe, mama. When are they leaving? Hey Joe, I don't want to be bad though. Just, just leave me alone. Let me just keep quiet. I will sleep inside the room. I will watch the TV on my phone. I will do whatever I want to watch there. If you don't cook for me, I'm probably the soup is finished. I will go and buy McDonald's. All right? Just let me be. And these are stupid women. Brainless women that have no brain at all. You don't understand when to tell your family to go and when they're supposed to come. You don't come and allow your family to ruin your own marriage. You don't do that. Hello? It's not done. That's not the way things work. Things don't work like that. The moment you are married, you're supposed to understand you are no more a kid. The moment you are married, you're supposed to understand there is a different responsibility. This is a different kind of life. The moment you get married, it's a different board game mentality. The moment you get married, I'm telling you, you're supposed to grow up. And let your siblings, let them understand you are now a responsible woman. You have a home. When they come in to come and be with you, there's a time. There's a time limit. They can't just come here and just mess up your marriage. Your husband is expecting some things from you. You got to respect the man. You submit to him. There are some men, they won't talk. They will, they, will, they will play with your family. They will do all kinds of stuff. Because they're doing that, because they're doing that, doesn't mean... That the man is happy. The man is only doing it just to just to be able to please you. You should know when to tell your family to stop. Enough. You got to go. And they got to go. Give respect to your husband. Respect him. Because he's actually accommodating them doesn't mean that he's comfortable. He, uh, he tell you, he, <coughs> he's depriving himself. He's depriving himself of a lot of things. To be able to receive them. Your mommy is coming into the house and doing whatever she likes. You think it's up? Is it because I marry you don't mean that your mommy will come here and be running me? I, I, would, I would tell him, I would tell him right to his face, to her face. Hey, mommy, please, 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 please. I marry your daughter. I didn't marry you. Okay? You're not allowed to come and stay here two years. Ma, you gotta go. I'm telling you. You can't come and, uh, come and ruin my marriage. I want to I wanna make love to my wife. I can't do it in this house. You are, you are, you are, you are invading my privacy. All right? There are certain things I want to do in this house I can't do, all right? You can't come here and be, just be pushing me around. You can't be telling me all nasty stuff and be reporting me to family members. For what? All right? This is a different ball game here. You didn't give me your... It, it, it's just as if to say, when you gave me your daughter, you told me that, okay, you're going to, you're going to come with her. And if you told me that, okay, anywhere my daughter goes, I'm going to go, then I would have told you, I'm not marrying your daughter anymore. I would have left your daughter alone that time. I just, just walk away and look for a woman that can be independent. That's the stuff. That's the place of the family. The family has got a place. Husband and wife, they got a place. All right? The moment you're married, the family must respect your marriage. They must respect you, respect your marriage, and give you the honor. You don't just invite them and open the door to them to come over and intrude anytime. No, they can't. The marriage is supposed to be enjoyed. 
And right now, you are not thinking for yourself. You are thinking for two. You are thinking for two. It is now you and your husband. What your husband is not pleased about, you are not supposed to do. What you are not pleased for, pleased about, he is not going to do. His own mom is not going to come and come and stay put. Sometimes the mother of the husband always want to come and pull weight. I say, Ilio, Ilio, mom, Ilio, Ilio, man, get out of here. Mama, my dear, don't be me up. Ilio, man, Ilio, man, you know, so many mother-in-laws that are from the from the from the side of the husband, they always want to pull weight, and they say, "Iliomo, Iliomo, Iliomo, Iliomo." Is that become the house of the woman? Your your son is making a home for the wife, not your own, not his own. He doesn't have any right upon the house over the house. The house belongs to the two of them. So go and sit with your own husband. Lord Joko, Lord Joko, go and sit with your husband. All right? Go sit there. And take care of your husband in Nigeria. And whenever it is that is needed to come and visit your grandchildren, you can come and visit, but you are not here to come and stay put. If you are sick, if you are sick, okay? If you are sick, you are coming here to come and stay, it's going to be an agreement between the husband and wife and say, okay, my mother is sick, she's going to call me in to come over and, uh, I'll be, uh, and, and see the doctor. I saw like that you can stay there until you become well. But when, even when you are staying there, you don't cross the line. Even when you are staying there, you don't cross the line. Oh, you, oh, you, you have no right to come and be intruding when the husband and wife are fighting. If they don't call you, they are stay away from them. Okay? If they don't invite you to come over to the affair, you stay away from the affair. If they put you inside of the inside of the basement, stay in the basement. Let them buy you a TV there and be watching TV. Let them buy you calling card and be calling Nigeria. All right? You don't come and intrude. None of you guys should give them the right to intrude. They are supposed to be advisors. Okay? When you have problems, you call mommy and daddy and say, come over and advise us. Then they advise and then they go. And as a mother-in-law, you cannot stand on the, on, the, on the back of your own son or on the back of your daughter. You have to be neutral. You sit on the fence. You listen to who has done something, you listen to the whole story, and then you are going to be able to encourage them to, together, not tear them apart. You don't start a fight and be supporting your own son or supporting your own daughter. All right? That's why I don't recommend that. I always tell people when you have a situation, you go and call outsider. Go and call a professional. You don't call insider. Don't call mommy, daddy. Because automatically, mommy and daddy will always want to back up their own children. They will stay behind their children. And that's not the right thing to do. That's going to mess up your home. It's going to mess up your marriage. It will mess it up. And if you don't know, okay? So go and call somebody outside. Call a professional that don't have, that will not have record of whatever you guys discuss. And will, he will destroy it after you guys are done. All right? So these are the things. These are the things that we need to look into. Look into it. people. So I was talking somewhere. Somebody said, Pastor Zola is American. Pastor Zola is not American. It's the kind of life we should live. It's not being American. It's the kind of life we should live. As people. It's, it's, it's the will of God. That's the will of God for us. That's the will of God for us. To be able to live in peace. Okay? The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, it says, He has called us to peace. We are supposed to have peace in our relationship. We are supposed to have peace in our marriage. All right? That's what he has called us to. But God will help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. This weekend, I'm going to be in New Jersey, by the grace of God, at the Christ Life Church. I'm going to be at the Christ Life Church this, um, this Saturday. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas. For people who would love to see me, you can see me on Monday. You can see me Monday the 6th. Whoa. Hey, 
Thank you guys. Bonita Bones. Kenny Adewale. Thank you. Vivian Dissus. Thank you. Oh. Elini Dope. Oye Doi. Ola Ni Bebo. Kei Sami. Precious Benedo. Adeusi Yekude. Oluwa kemi ajani To be Maria To me fagola Patience pastor thank you Love you Ose Ola ni yi baba Ye today Oluwa jo mi loju Taiwo ilade Lo be tikeze Elini dogbe thank you Oshinowo Obulano Joy Omonuwa Ola bisi o pa dotu Ola ke awe Ola yi ka show Ojo Julet Oshinowo Oshin Oji sola ade omo lara ki yemi Thank you, Bonita. Princess Edna. God day on the solar roof. And they will be. They will not worry. But we say, the Bora, follow the day of Shilaja. Don't worry. Don't worry. All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Wonderful Wednesday morning. Happy new month to everybody. Love you guys so much. Nah. Come on, let me give you a hug. Nah. That's it. See you guys later. Bye.